Okay, good day everybody. And today we are going to start our new series on of consumer arithmetic in mathematics, of course. Recently we would have finished our series of algebra, specifically addressing the subject of the formula. There are many more other topics in algebra that will come down later, you know, functions and geometry, trigonometry, all these things will be addressed in time to come. But now we're going to move on, taking it softly into consumer arithmetic. What are we going to do today? So firstly, we're going to look at the concept of consumer arithmetic so that we'll just have that general big picture of what consumer arithmetic is all about when we do it math. And last but not least, we're going to look at the key terms definition. We're going to be defining a few key terms or concepts. We can call them concepts as we delve into consumer arithmetic. So today we're going to just be mostly talking and discussing. We're going to get into some arithmetic following this video. Good. So what is consumer arithmetic? Very simple. What is a consumer? A consumer is simply a buyer of products. You can consider that person as the one who benefits from buying a product or the one who benefits from receiving a service if we're looking into the world of business. So that is the consumer. A common thing we say in Grenada here is that the consumer is always right or the buyer is always right. Well, that might have its merit. But yes, the consumer is basically the person that does the buying. The regular citizen, if you might want to call it like that. And what is arithmetic? Arithmetic is basically the branch of mathematics that deals with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So what do you get when you put consumer and arithmetic together? You get that topic in math, so that branch of mathematics in which you deal with the buyer and the arithmetic behind what he buys. The addition, subtraction, whatever, whatever, whatever. So that's just to draw a big picture. I mean, it doesn't matter much necessarily. But sometimes when we hear the word consumer arithmetic, it, song, it sounds high tech, you know, but that's basically what it's all about. Basically, we do the math that benefits or the math that is about the consumption or the consumer, what the consumer buy versus what he sells, what he receives and blah, blah, blah. Basically, to make a long story short. Good. Moreover, there are some key concepts that we use a lot, a lot, a lot under consumer arithmetic. But sometimes we don't understand the definition. So I think it's key before moving on that we understand or we have a common understanding of what these key concepts are or these terms. Here we have profit. So we're going to look at that. We're going to derive a standard definition for profit, loss, cost price, mark price, original price. Notice they're all under the same heading. Discount, tax, down payment, and percentage. Good. Moving on swiftly. So let's start with profit. What is a profit? Simply put, a profit is any extra money or any extra amount of money made after selling an item. So if you sell an item and you sell it for more than what it's supposed to be or more than what you got it for, whatever that extra sum of money is will be considered a profit. Simple example, you went to the shop, you bought a pencil for $1. As you reach in school, your friend wanted a pencil and you offered him a dollar and fifty cents. That is more than what you bought it for. So then that then if the person buys it, you simply had you made a profit of fifty cents. We're gonna get into the math later though. I just want us to understand the concept. So a profit is any extra money or any extra amount of money made after selling an item. In math, so when we do consumer arithmetics, this is often abbreviated as P. Oh, sorry about that. It is often abbreviated as P, like the letter P. So you would often see P referring to profit. After profit, another word that you will hear and use a lot under consumer arithmetic is loss. What is a loss? We can simply define a loss as the amount of money made less than the cost price after selling an item. The amount of money that is less than the cost price after selling an item. So again, we're going back to the pencil. If I bought a pencil for $1, and when I reach into the classroom, my friend wants a pencil, and I decide to sell it for him for 50 cents, then I would have made a loss there now of 50 cents because I sold it less than the cost price or the original price that I would have bought the item for. And a common question a lot of my students ask, why would people sell something to make a loss? And yeah, it, it might sound illogical, but when you really think of the world of business, it makes a lot of sense. Because some business people understand that 
price sometimes, not price, items sometimes lose their value. And if I might keep it simple, I'm using the same pencil. If I bought the pencil and the pencil was brand new, from top to bottom, the pencil was never used. But now by the time I'm ready to sell it, let's say I shave the pencil, I use a sharpener and I use it several times. And it's shorter, it's closer to finishing or it's closer to disintegrating, if you might want to put it like that. I may not want to honestly sell, sell that pencil for the same price I bought it for. So I might count my losses. Or we could even think of something else. Think about a car. Let's think about something bigger. A car. When I buy a car, let's suppose I bought it brand new. The, it worked. It has worked because it's new. Nobody ever used it. But eventually, after using the car, you know, you lose value. You know, you drive on the road. It might get dent. It might get some rust somewhere. Whatever. Something would have been used. As a result, you know, you you lose some value. And yes, that is why sometimes you sell something at a loss. Not because you want to lose, but because sometimes that is what it honestly was. And loss is usually represented by L. When we do in algebra, usually we represent that using the letter F. And here we have cost price, mark price, and original price. That pop up much earlier than I wanted to, but that's okay. And this all means the same thing. What is the cost price, mark price, original price? That is simply the actual price of an item. So when we talk about consumer arithmetics, again, as I said, we need to know these terms because you will hear them a lot. Cost price is simply the same thing as mark price, which is the same thing as the original price, which is actually the actual price of an item. So you go to the supermarket and you want to buy a bourbon biscuit or a lollipop. The actual price that you see when you go to the shop, that will be the cost price or the mark price or the original price. You went change it. It wasn't interfered with. It was given that price. That's the original price. So that is what you call your cost price. And this also has abbreviation, cost price, you would normally see CP. And for the MAC price, you would normally see MP. So these are, these are abbreviations that you should be aware of because these are the terms that we're going to be using when we look at, when we start doing the arithmetics behind it. I have never seen OP for original price. So I would not even tell you that. As, as a gamer, I know that OP means overpowered. <laughs> so usually when something is OP, it is overpowered, but I, I would not tell you that OP means here original price. If it does, well, I will later, but I've never seen that reference. But you will definitely see CP and you will definitely see MP even in textbooks. Cost price for CP, mark price for MP. What is CP and what is MP? The actual price of an item. Moving on swiftly. Discount. What is a discount? Simply put, a discount is the sum of money deducted from the cost price when buying an item. Or in other words, if I might put it in even simpler terms, the discount is the amount of money that you have to pay less. In other words, they will be deducting that from whatever you're buying. So if an item costs one dollar, I'm sticking to my pencil, my dollar pencil, and the, the shopkeeper tell you that they will give you a 25 cent discount, that means that you have to pay 25 cents less for that pencil and that is what a discount is all about this is one word that shows off throw out a lot of students because they don't understand what is a discount a discount when shopping if i must add here is a good thing because when you get a discount it simply means that you're paying less later when we do the arithmetic here you would see that discount is usually represented as a decimal sorry as a percentage so we're going to usually they tell you you have a five percent discount or a ten percent discount uh, I've seen discount as high up as 50%, meaning that you're simply paying half of the original price. Good. So that is basically what is a discount in simple terms. Tax, we can simply see tax as the opposite of a discount. A discount is a sum of money that is deducted from whatever the cost price. A tax is a sum of money that will be added to your cost price. So yes, tax does make our buying a little more expensive. So if something costs a dollar and there is tax attached to it, you will be paying more than a dollar. And tax, like discount, is usually presented in a percentage. So usually you pay a 10% tax, a 5% tax, a 15% tax of the cost price. And again, that is usually a sum of money that you add to your cost price, thus making your item slightly more expensive. So whereas discount makes your item cheaper, 
your tax makes it a little more expensive, right? So those are two things that you have to be able to make a clear distinction of. I have students also that sometimes mix up whether to add the discount or whether to subtract the discount. Some students mix up whether to add the tax price or whether to deduct the tax price. But here we know now that the discount, the tax is always added to your, to, your, to your price. Whatever is it that you're buying, the tax you always add to it, thus making it more expensive. And the discount is deducted, always deducted. If you get a discount, that means you have to subtract that amount from whatever you're buying. And again, when we get into the arithmetics, you will see it even easier. Moving on, down payment. This is a word that show off a lot of students too, especially when we do higher purchase, which we will be addressing in time to come. What is a down payment really? A down payment is part of a sum paid on an item with arrangements to pay the remaining on a later date or at another time. Um, I would like to use a quotes example, but not everybody shops through quotes. So again, let me stick to my pencil. Imagine a grade one child want to buy a pencil or a kindergarten child and the pencil costs a dollar. But the child doesn't have all that money. He only has cents. So he goes to the shopkeeper and say, I have 25 cents. So can I put on this now and I will give you the rest later or next week or every other week I give you something? And that is basically the best, the best definition of a down payment. So a down payment is basically putting down a sum of money to pay the rest to pay the rest later or to make an arrangement so that the rest can be paid at a later time. Usually, of course, in the world of business, there is a percentage or a fraction in which you have to put down. So it's not just you deciding, um, like the little child telling the shopkeeper, oh, can I put on 25 cents? No, it's not always like that. So usually you have a fraction you have to put on. Like for course, if I might use that example now, sometimes I expect you to put on half first, sometimes a third, or some fraction of the total price first. And then you make an arrangement to pay the rest in what they call installments. I should have had that definition also, but I did not. So installment is basically the other pieces that you're paying up to complete the total price. So you first you put a down payment. So let me say the item costs, and I'm going bigger here now. Let's say the item costs $500. A down payment now, you put down $100. $100 out of that $500. That is your down payment. And then you have to pay $400 at a later time. Of course, it doesn't have to be right out or true out. When I say true out, right through in one payment, but you can pay in different phases. And that is where the word installments come to play. So you put on 100 and then you could pay the others into installments of 100. Hope I did not lose you there. But you can always listen to it again and make sense out of it. Down payment, you put on a sum, but there is a rest or there is a remainder that you have to pay over a period of time or as i have it here a little later that arrangement is again based on where you're buying and who you're buying from personal arrangements may not always be the same as a negotiation with a business it may not always be the same i could make a deal with my wife for example but that may not be the same thing if i'm dealing with a businessman it might be a total different story they have a system in place so that they will have to be able to pay back the rest and last but not least, the last definition we have to look at is percentage. And percentage, simply put, we can say it's any number over 100. But that is when we're doing percentage in isolation. In terms of consumer arithmetics, the percentage is usually a proportion of a price. Simply put. And this can be used to calculate or represent several things. It could be either a proportion of your profit, it could be a proportion of your loss, it could be a proportion of your discount, of your tax, of your higher purchase, of your installment. You could have a percentage of anything. So a percentage is basically, simply put, a proportion of your price. So if we're dealing in terms of profit, if I ask you for your percentage profit, that is a proportion of your price in which you would have made an extra sum of money. If I ask you for your percentage loss, that is a proportion of your price in which you show me how much money you lost. A percentage discount, that is a proportion of the price of the amount of money that have to be deducted from your cost price. 
So you could look at it that way. That is really what is a percentage. So if I ask you for 5%, supposing I tell you, give me 5% discount. All I'm asking you to calculate there is how much that 5% represents of your price. And since it's a profit, sorry, since it's a discount, that proportion of the price will tell us how much money we deducting from your cost price. Good. And that basically will bring us to the end of today's video. So again, go through your definitions. In the next video, we're going to look at how to calculate profit. So we're going to look at profit. We're going to look at loss, discount. We have several videos. This series will have over 10 videos because we're going to look at each concept by themselves and build upon consumer arithmetic. So again, ensure that you understand these terms because these are the terms that I will be using throughout this series. So I would not later down the line be explaining profit, loss, cost price, mark price, original price, discount, tax, higher purchase. These terms are terms that you have to learn here now. Or you could always refer to this video, of course, or make a note if you're following on the series. And then we're going to look at other areas in consumer arithmetics where these terms are applied. So with nothing else today, folks, you enjoy the rest of your day. Again, make sure to like, share and subscribe. Share with your friends, share with your classmates so that they could also get in tune and learn these concepts as they do prepare themselves for the CSEC exam or just to know, just to learn, you know. So do enjoy the rest of your day. Day, take care.